Hello, math students. This video is going to be a little origin story on the number or symbol pi. Circles are a really fundamental shape that we have in the world. You see them everywhere. So it's probably important that we know a little bit about some, some of their basics. So before we get into the origins of pi, we'll just go over a few things about a circle. Um, the center of the circle, um, the distance from the center of the circle to the outside is known as the radius. That is the radius. And the distance from one point of the circle through the center to the other is called the diameter. And the distance around the circle is called the circumference. That is called the circumference. So where pi comes in is that they're looking for some constant where they could say, all right, well, it's easy to measure the diameter. It's easy to measure the diameter, but it's somewhat inaccurate to, to measure the whole uh, circumference of the circle because measuring tools weren't so great. So they said, we want some constant where we can go, all right, we have our diameter, I'll call it D. So D times some constant, we'll call it pi, equals the circumference. This is a formula you will come to know. Okay? Um, you might also just call that C equals the circumference C. So what they, they could measure the diameter and they could roughly measure the circumference, but it wasn't horribly accurate. Um, so what they did is they would go, all right, so let's try to find this value, this pi. And using a little bit of algebra, we can go, all right, let's divide by D, let's divide by D. And we go, all right, pi equals C over D. So they could go and they could measure a, a circle circumference and they could me roughly measure the circle circumference and roughly measure the diameter, or pretty precisely measure the diameter. And they said, all right, it equals approximately three. And then eventually they said, all right, we did it, got a little bit more accurate. And they said, all right, it actually is probably closer to 3.1. And that's the value that they used for a while until uh, Archimedes, a famous mathematician in 250 BC, said, this is not accurate enough. This 3.1 nonsense, this is not accurate enough. So what he did is he said, all right, I'm going to go right here. I'm going to take this circle. And on the inside of it, I'm going to draw an octagon. So he goes here and he says, all right, let's draw this octagon. And as you can see, this octagon is a roughly, the perimeter of this octagon is going to be roughly the circumference of the circle, but it's not horribly precise. Look, this distance here to here is going to be a little bit less than this whole distance. So he said, that's not accurate enough. I need to be more accurate than that. So he says, all right, well, let's do this. Let's double the amount of points that we're connecting here, and let's draw a 12-gon. So that's what he did. So he said, all right, let's draw this 12-gon in here now. And as you can see, we've got this 12-gon now. And as you see, this is going to look significantly more accurate to the circumference of the circle. However, still is a little bit sh um, going to be a little bit smaller than the actual circumference of this circle. But using some advanced geometry, um, you can find this perimeter of this 12 gun now 100% um, accurately using some advanced geometry. And so now we've got a 12 gun and he kept uh, doubling the amount of sides. So he went from a 12 gun to a 24 gun to a 48 gun to a 96 gun. And he said, all right. Um, he, and then he found his value of the 96 gun using some geometry and he found pi. And again, that's going to be a little bit under the actual value. And for the circumference, then he could find the diameter. And uh, so he found the circumference or the perimeter of that 96 gun. And he found that to be um, three or the ratio from the circumference to the diameter or the perimeter of that 96 gun to the diameter to be three and one seventh.
but we know that's going to be a little bit less than what pi actually is. So pi is a smidgen greater than 3 and 1 sevenths, he said. And he goes, all right, well, now we know what it's a little bit under. So let's do this. Let's take this shape here, and let's, um, let's take the circle, and let's make a octagon that's a little bit bigger than it now. So he goes here, and he makes this octagon that's a little bit bigger than the actual shape. So now we've got an octagon that is slightly bigger than this circle, but not horribly more, right? So now this, you can see this pink, this distance here to here, right? This is going to be a little bit greater. It's on the outside. And he kept doing that. And he, all right, this is an octagon, this pink octagon. He said, all right, now I'm going to do it. Uh, this is a 6-gon, then went to a 12-gon, 24-gon, 48-gon, and finally to a 96-gon. And he sat, found that, and he could, again, using some advanced geometry, he could find the perimeter of that 96-gon, that was a little bit greater, and he could uh, find that ratio from the circumference to the diameter. And he said, all right, well, that's going to be our, our upper bound, so that's going to be a little bit, pi is going to be a little bit less than 3 and 10 over 71 and this is incredibly close to three and one sevenths so he was extremely accurately able to find the value um, for pi is um, so pi as we know it thanks to people like Archimedes in seventh grade math we will call pi 3.14 you might see some people go up to pi to be equal to 3.14159, da, 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 but it keeps going on forever and ever and ever. It's an irrational number, but thanks to people like Archimedes and his advanced knowledge of geometry and mathematics, we are able to get the number pi equals 3.14. So that is our video on the origins of pi. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something.